Before we take a look at the principles of the Darwinian model of evolution, we're going to look at the principles of an earlier evolutionary theory put forward by the French naturalist in this picture here, Jean-Baptiste Pierre-Antoine de Monet, Chevalier de Lamarck which we will, for the sake of simplicity, just refer to as Lamarck, and his model would be the Lamarckian model of evolution. Now, even though Lamarck was proven incorrect due to some fairly glaring misunderstandings about how evolutionary characteristics are passed on, his theory acted as an important stepping stone to understanding how the modern Darwinian model of evolution is actually more correct. Now, the key tenet of Lamarck's theory is that he believed that organisms could take action during their lives in order to cause changes to occur within either the structure of the organism or the physiology of the organism, that being the chemical interactions that take place on the inside of an organism. And on the surface, this is actually quite common sense. For example, this perfectly describes how human muscle growth and strength training occurs. The more we take action in terms of exercising a specific muscle group, the more it leads to that muscle group getting stronger and ultimately causing the muscle to grow. Now, where Lamarck was proven incorrect, however, is that just because organisms can exert some sort of change on their structure and physiology during their lifetime, this does not automatically mean that those characteristics are passed on to an organism's offspring, because evolution is not simply looking at how organisms can undergo structural and physiological changes during their lifetime, but how those characteristics are passed on across generations. For example, if we were to apply the Lamarckian model of evolution to a non-human organism, we could come up with this conclusion here, that organisms either grow or strengthen components of their body, that being components of their structure or their physiology that they use repeatedly, and conversely, that they would actually lose components of their body or their physiology that they do not use over time. And again, Lamarck proposed that it, that since these changes occur during the organism's lifetime, they could also be passed on to their offspring. And once again, this was the key characteristic that was proving wrong. But once again, it was, at least on the surface, completely understandable why Lamarck made this uh, possible conclusion. Uh, for example, if we take a look at the giraffe here, the act of stretching Lamarck believed, stretching up to reach the leaves on taller trees over time within the giraffe's lifespan would lead to the neck growing longer in order to allow the giraffe to reach higher parts of the tree to allow it to outcompete less vertically gifted organisms. However, this characteristic is not necessarily passed on into an organism's offspring, and this was proven wrong by another biologist by the name of August Weismann, uh, who did a rather simple example involving mice. So what Weismann did is he actually took a pair of experimental mice and surgically removed their tails. Now, according to Le Malkian evolution, when these mice without tails were allowed to reproduce, because these mice don't have tails, logically the offspring would not be born with tails, because if the, the mouse doesn't have a tail, it can't use the tail, and therefore cannot either grow or strengthen it in order to be able to pass it on. However, even though the two parents in this case clearly did not have tails. The offspring of these mice clearly did have tails, and this pattern didn't just continue for the first generation, but when Weismann repeated the experiment 19 times in a row, every single time the offspring mice clearly had tails. And this clearly proved that Lamarck was incorrect in terms of his assumption regarding uh, not just the 
changes that occur within an organism's lifetime, because with some exceptions like muscle, this is generally untrue, but also with the idea that changes that occur within an organism's lifetime would then be passed on to their offspring, and Weismann's relatively simple, albeit slightly unethical experiment, definitely prove that this does not occur. Now, it's important to note that even though Lamauk's hypothesis was ultimately proven incorrect, it's not fundamentally surprising that he predicted this the way that he did, as no biologist, Lamauk or Darwin, or even Weismann for that matter, knew of the existence of DNA, and therefore the understanding of how characteristics are inherited from one's parents and are passed on to one's offspring, we had no understanding about how this process fundamentally worked. And the actual disproving of Lamalk was an important stepping stone that led to the modern understanding of the Darwinian model of evolution, which is actually going to be the subject of the next two videos in this series. So join us next time where we explore the contrasting hypothesis put forward by Darwin and how it better represents how organisms undergo change across multiple generations.